the masters defeated the ones that came through. They were um, at the face of the serpent. So I'm guessing they were either draconians or reptilians at that time that it brought forth. Um, but I love how they said that you, that but man has the power to show their faces. So apparently they're able to shape shift, but only for a certain amount of time. But if you use your word and I'm always curious of what the word is that you can actually, like if you're sitting face to face with one of these beings, you can ask them to, and, and our command, they unveil themselves and they have to show themselves to you. So do you have any insight of what this word is? <laughs> Do you think there's a reason why word was capitalized? What if it's just like the frequency the man speaks? So if we're speaking in a way that's not from fear, if we're speaking in our aligned power, what if that's enough to make them reveal who they are? Just by saying like, show yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and then the law of three, right? Like I, I, if you tell them three times, they have to show themselves. And we do this a lot within our quantum healing. They, you, you know, if there's any attachments and you ask for their name three times, they have to unveil themselves. So, you know, mean it, say it three times and see what happens, I guess, if you want to know. Um, but also how they, because I know they've shown in like news programs or on TV how the reptilians kind of shape shift in life camera which is always like because they can't hold that frequency or maybe a sound they said like a sound machine could reveal their faces you know um and we're seeing that now yeah yeah we'll definitely have to ask Thoth more about this when we channel him because i'm very curious now they said they called themselves the masters of white and black which if you've also go down, go down the conspiracy rabbit hole, they talk about the white and black checkered floors of how they use those as a like sign of their power. And I'm like, okay, so we know dark and light. What's black and white? Like, what are <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. So if you look at the Pope, there is actually a a Pope. Um, there's the Pope that dresses in all white, but then there's another Pope that dresses in all black. And he doesn't come out as often, um, but I actually watched a podcast for Billy Carson where Billy Carson was talking about this, how the uh, the white and black are the Pope dressed in white that shows himself to the public. And then the Pope dressed in black is the Pope that we don't see that is like truly calling the shots and part of the jesuits could we set the intention that all things that are not of the light i guess well these things are one other of blackness they said not darkness but blackness so all things that are not of the light that, that they be revealed to us and then we'll maybe as we go throughout our life then those things will be uncovered to us yeah, and I think they are all about to be uncovered because they really want to keep us in fear. And so Thoth really goes on to say, only masters of brightness can conquer fear. Seek not the valley of shadow and light will only appear. So as long as we don't allow ourselves to live in fear and we are the light, then all of the shadows have to be brought into the surface. And this is absolutely what you are seeing among the collective right now. But I don't think that we as a collective can be ready for disclosure until we can be ready to not be triggered so much by disclosure. And I think that's why inner work for the collective and for individuals has to be so important. Because if you have other triggers from trauma in your life, then adding these things becomes like catapults you into, I think, a maybe a self-destructive place. But if you're at neutral and balanced with those triggers and traumas within your life and disclosure happens, you can see it from more of an understanding of why it all had to take place with no judgment. Yeah, absolutely. And there's definitely a lot of fear that the collective still needs to work through. Um, a lot of people want disclosure to happen immediately and don't understand why it hasn't happened yet 
but there's still a lot of people in the collective consciousness where it would do more harm than good. Yeah, I think it would. It would create a downward spiral. So it's like, do we even need that disclosure if we're not ready for it? And it's like, you know, and there are ways to honor and the the life choices, the life contracts of those that came to experience those crimes against humanity and just send them love and appreciation and gratitude. And that'll help come to a better place of raising the frequency of what actually happened. Um, you know, but both in releasing from the cycles and from space time, he was journeying about and his astral traveling and, and he got to the end of space um, at the cycle and there were pounds of the barrier, which they said they only move through angles and not in circles. Um, and so I was really like, what does that mean? The angles and not circles. Like I still have, like, I'm still a little confused by this. But I also think of when you think of like erratic energy or negative energy, like when it comes in your energy field, how it feels sharp and jagged. It feels like not nice, right? And when you think of love and harmony and how it feels like loving and soothing and kind of rounded and curved. And I'm like, is that what they mean by the angles that they these hounds move through the angles and not the circles? What do you think? So when I read this, we definitely have a lot of questions for Thoth about the last part of this tablet. I want to know who the hounds of the barriers are. And then kind of the download that I got when I was reading this is I thought of, they showed me a spiral staircase. So we can be in cycles with the universe while we're raising our consciousness. So our goal of a soul's evolution is to ascend upwards in our spiral staircase and then they showed me that when they say um we're journeying in angles it's like somebody else is determining the path for you you're not using your own free will it's like they're showing you where to go and you're just following blindly that was at least the download that i got but we absolutely should ask thoth no judgment. I'm very at a place of like finding humor in this. But do you remember how you used to always ask your parents would be like, if your friend jumped off a building, would you? I really felt like <laughs> COVID showed us who would. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like It was great place, great teacher for all of us about what we all just went through. Right. And I find humor in it. But in the retrospection, looking at it, I'm like, there are a bunch of people that would have jumped off the building. <laughs> If you jumped, it's all purposeful. We understand it might be part of your life contract. We love you. No judgment. But <laughs> sometimes we got to take a self-review. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so that makes me feel pretty good about the download I got. <laughs> <laughs> they were really showing me that if we move through angles, then we're just following the path of somebody else. Yeah. Or like how they use our own free will against us, like the the powers that may be having a control over our percepted world right now, that they use our free will, like where we're not even realizing we're giving them our free will. We're just like, you know, blindly following their guidance. And that's when we can take back our sovereignty, we can take back our power. And that's the whole reason of reading texts like the Emerald Tablets is how to do that. Ooh, so do you think that that's what a barrier is? That when he talks about the barriers, it's the conditioning that has been put upon us to keep us in the illusion of free will or to keep us on like the aligned path that they determined for us? Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, we're making connections. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're talking this out. And making connections. Yeah. So I absolutely think those are the barriers is that the uh, illusion, you know, the illusion that is the barrier. I think our subconscious automatically will follow these things, not understanding that it's giving away its power, but it's when you become the conscious creator that you now are moving with, you know, the divine rhythm of the universe. And I think that's what the angles are is that the circles are just that 
it's like when you see a frequency on a, you know, on an audio app, I guess, or, and it shows you a frequency and has this beautiful pulsating, you know, just beautiful curvature and how it's like when you're in sync with your conscious creation of, you know, using wisdom, which is of the highest good that you're naturally just moving through those beautiful rhythms. But when you're being blindly guided that you're not in sync with that, you're just bumper bowling. You're blindly just that ball's going down that bowling alley and it's just hitting bumper to bumper trying to get to its destination. No, he astral projected. And then when he found out, he went to the barriers of this cycle, he found the hounds and then the hounds were, once he saw them, he was like, Oh crud. And he was trying to go back. And they were following him. And then he fit, realized that he could move in the circles, that they could only follow him in the angles. And so he was saying that he's moving in the circles to have protections. Ooh, so and then so what do you think it means when they say the soul that dares the barriers could be held in bondage until the cycle is done and consciousness leaves? I think that it's talking about like understand like not to play with this stuff if you are not prepared and pure of light I think it's saying that those who unconsciously kind of like sold their souls to what you would say the devil or the darkness um that they then become entrapped in this bondage until we burst through the cycle of humanity Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. So do you think that people, like in Hollywood, that sell their souls, what if they become NPCs? They could, but you also see a lot of humanity, like a lot of Hollywood, that you can go back and look at pictures back in time, like 100 years ago, and they're the same bodies, the same like characters. Yeah, it's interesting when you when you start to talk about that, and I know that's a whole rabbit hole that we could go down, just because nothing could ever actually entrap the soul as a sovereign being. So I'm going to have to ask him a little bit of clarity when he says you would be held in bondage until this, this cycle is done. I think you're held to be used for their will. Why do you think there are so many of the main names in Hollywood that keep on putting out more and more kids that repeat in our stars and, you know, they're like main names in Hollywood and in some of these key players in politics and all of these things that we experience here in the United States, like they keep recycling. I think that they're used for their will to be players until we like break these chains, break these bondages, and then they'll be free too. Yeah, absolutely. And then he also says, when free from the body, if you hear the hounds turn around. So when I think of this, I think he means confront them because you'll realize how powerful your light is and that if you are the light, there really is nothing to fear. And especially if you start doing things like astral projection, you can, there will be different opportunities <laughs> we'll say opportunities and experiences where you will see how powerful your light is you know i hear the different i hear the if you it means turn around <laughs> it means come back like if you're not ready and prepared 100 percent for this that you have a possibility to be entrapped lifetime and lifetime over so if you're astral projecting and you hear them just that's a warning like don't play with that like come back you know, you have a bigger mission and, you know, if you're not fully prepared, there's, there's chance that something can happen. I don't mean that as fear. I just mean that as like, he's just telling you like, this is, there's a cause and effect. Like if you don't want to have the effect of being entrapped, don't get, don't play around with the cause, which is, you know, trying to take on the hounds. He didn't stay and fight them. Both came back to his own body. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think, yeah, that also is like, we have to choose what battles we fight. <laughs> and it's more just about our going within and doing our own healing work and just understanding that we're all in this together. So we don't have to go fight any battles alone. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, 
And he says when you come back, you use the cross with a circle around it. And it reminds me of the Celtic cross. So I have to look at the origins of the Celtic cross. I didn't do that for the podcast, but I want to, to understand uh, how that applies. But it oh, almost reminds me of the ink. Um, onk. The, oh. Yeah, but I'm going to research that later. <laughs> But this chapter was this, these two chapters were just beautiful and such a gift. And yeah, we took it there. We went to the, we went to talk about what's going on in humanity right now, but only to show that the, we're part of cycle. This isn't new. This isn't something that, you know, this is something we have the opportunity to break the bondage of in this lifetime. And that's what we came here as light workers and volunteers here um, for humanity right now. And so it's just a matter of, what are we being distracted with? What are our triggers? What do we need to work on? And, you know, continually facing the light and allowing the light to do a lot of that battle to just unveil more light within the darkness. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a lot of questions for Thoth this time around. I'm really excited to get his perspective. So Carrie, do you want to bring him in? Oh, it's really trying to be an angel in front of me right now, which never happens. So 